Okay, now here in this processing plant is where we take out the rubber from the roots, which we then would want to make into things. So this is a bag of roots harvested from the field. Now, some roots don't have very much rubber in them. I'm just going to check this one. It breaks very cleanly, so that's a low rubber root. Let's try another one. Ah, now this one, you see here, it's still attached by the rubber in the, in the plant. So we can break this up in different places. And you can see it, it breaks, but it's still held together by the rubber. So this is what we're after, plants, roots that look like this, that pass this break test, as we call it and do not immediately break. And now what we then do with these is we put them in this piece of equipment, which is a chopper and crusher. This is to increase the surface area of the different pieces of roots. So here we would take the roots like this, flatten them and chop them up to make them easier to extract. Now once that is done, they come out of this piece of equipment and they go into this one. So here, we weigh the amount of roots, and they go up the bucket elevator, and then go into this PLC-controlled hot water inulin countercurrent extractor. Now what this does is extract the inulin from these roots. This is high molecular weight polyfructose, and it interferes with rubber extraction. The PLC is behind these tanks, and it's controlled by computers. So they're loaded up, and the plumbing allows up to 12 countercurrent extractions, which means with each extraction, the inulin syrup becomes more concentrated and more concentrated. The final syrup is actually pumped across the ceiling to a large stainless steel storage tank at the end of this processing plant. Now the roots will get dropped onto the conveyor belt once the inulin is gone. And they're now looking like a, a mulch with rubber in it. So they come down this conveyor and are dropped into a big container and are then taken up to either the large hammer mill in the back there, a pebble mill I mean, pebble mill in the back there, or these air lift enzyme reactors. So this allows us to do all sorts of combinations of extraction treatments to get our best possible rubber yield. Now once we have our rubber and root skins separated, they will come back to the a separator that is behind us here. Okay, so our mixture of separated root skins and rubber then go into this two-stage flotation separator which floats the rubber while the gas and root skins sink. We repeat this with an identical piece of equipment here. After this, we collect it all and wash it some more in a screener washer. We also recover the water used for recycling at this step. Now the rubber is then scraped off the top and it looks a bit like grey boiled rice. That material is then dumped into this small auger, which is a dewatering auger. And the idea is that this will squeeze some of the water out so there'll be less to dry. So this sort of squeezed boiled rice sort of mixture then goes to the oven across the way and is then dried in trays uh, to remove the rest of the water. At that point, we can put all that rubber together and squeeze it into blocks that can be distributed using our heated rubber press. So the same piece of equipment that we would use to make a testing sample, we can use to make our raw rubber samples for distribution.